Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh and you are, wow, we're at part five of my ex-pastor series. And if you've never seen my explanation or my stories of why I'm an ex-pastor, you just gotta head over here and check out this series of videos. It's 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 a wormhole that you wanna go down if you really are, are trying to understand about where I am now and deconstructing my faith and what led me to that position. And what led me there was a mega church in my town who who moved me out here and my family out here, we uprooted our whole entire lives to come out to this place to, to be a place to be a part of this church. It was the dream church. It was the mega church. And eventually I took parental leave because I was being burned out by this, by said church. Uh, I wasn't receiving any help and I was just being burned out. And anybody in ministry knows when you're burned out, it's just, it's a dangerous place to be. So I took parental leave, federally protected parental leave. And because I took my leave, I believe I was fired because I took parental leave. And I have yet to be given proof or evidence that the, that I was going to be fired beforehand. And uh, there's a couple of things we're going to address in today's video about what happened with it all. And so a couple of days ago, they had a church meeting. Every year they have a couple of meetings. One, this this one, which is their vision meeting, where they sit down um, with the, the whole church. Anybody is supposed to be invited to this church meeting, okay? So they leave it open to everybody who wants to come, but only members are allowed to vote. So that's how this has always gone. And so we're gonna get into that a little bit about this meeting because it's online, obviously, because of COVID and everything else. But I believe that they use this um, excuse to close this meeting off and make it private to only members because of the statement we're about to watch. Now, I'm not going to be giving away names. I'm going to be blurring the video, um, but I'm going to walk you through the, the uh, piece by piece of what they're saying here, and I'm going to rebut it, and I'm going to tell you the truth, um, and I'm going to I'm going to try to do this from a balanced perspective, as balanced as I possibly can. And I'm going to answer some of the questions that those people in that meeting asked that they refused to answer. And so it needs to be said first that this is a meeting that the church opens up its doors to everybody to come to. This is supposed to be that meeting. Now, when you come to these meetings, they say, here's what's going on in the future. We're so excited. Here are our map goals. Remember the map goals I got fired for? We'll talk about that in a minute. And here's here's our plan for the budget. And, and then we're going to say, here's our future plans. And, every, and then the members vote on it. If you're not a member, you're not allowed to raise your hand and vote, but you are allowed and supposed to be allowed because of transparency to come to these meetings, regardless if you're a member or not. And they've always had this. So it needs to be said right off the top. This was a private meeting. Only members were allowed to join. And this is how they said it. Normally we would open this up to everybody, but because there's voting happening, we can only have private members in this meeting. So people are like, oh, I get it right? But here's the issue. As soon as you went into the meeting, all the votes were taken on a separate platform anyway, and you were not allowed to vote unless you're a registered member. So they could have opened this meeting to the public, and they didn't. They did this on purpose because of the statement we're about to watch right now. They didn't want the entire church population who wanted to be a part of this to hear this. Well, now you're going to hear it. I have someone on the inside who has recorded this meeting for me. I did not watch it in real time. I just actually watched it five minutes ago. And uh, again, uh, I, I apologize if I'm going to sound a little upset sometimes just because I really am passionate about not being lied to and the justice that uh, my family requires from this position. And so let's get right into it. Understanding that they're trying to, the optics here are really important for them and they're trying to bury it. And also understand that the executive pastor said zero when he was in the meeting, the recording that I'm going to try to put out very soon um, as well. So he didn't say anything. It also needs to be stated that this was written by a lawyer, not by them. So uh, and you'll hear why in a minute. So let's get right into the first part of the video. There's a couple parts here. Um, we're going to we're going to read uh, the lead pastors, the lead teaching, the co They've changed the title so many times. The co-lead teaching pastor, something or other, supercalifragilistic pastor. Uh, they don't even know the name anymore. They have so many weird titles because that's how they roll. So let's get right into the first video. Again, I'm blurring everything out. You're not going to be able to. I'm probably going to change the voices as well. But I want you guys to hear the statement. And they caught a, they caught it a little to 10 seconds after he started. But you'll get the gist of it here. So let's listen. And I'm going to interject when I can. And videos on social media criticizing the leadership of our church. So he's talking about my ex-pastor series that I have on my podcast and here on YouTube that has exploded. So it needs to be said, they're only doing this because clearly this is going viral and locally so many people have heard it and internally at their church, people are complaining. Otherwise they would have kept their mouth shut. They had, it needs to be said, they had no choice but to do this. And I'm sure they were really happy about it. For the longest time we felt, given Josh's refusal to meet with us, that the best approach was to remain silent. However, 
in responding to questions raised and recognizing the possibility that more questions may be raised at this meeting. The elders have prepared this brief statement. So we are con we were trying to bury this. We were not going to say anything because we thought it would all go away. And it sort of did. Even though after I released my podcast, nobody really said a word. Then I released the YouTube video and then everybody watched it. So here are the answers. So you guys are asking a ton of questions. So it's imperative for us to come up with a statement prepared by a lawyer and elders that sounds like this. When a staff member fails to fulfill the role required of them, the team tasked with the hiring process has to bear some measure of responsibility for the failed selection. We failed. So what he's saying is here, we're self-depreciating. It's, it's us to blame. We shouldn't have hired him to begin with. We shouldn't have hired him to begin with. And when he's failed to complete his duties, let's go back to what I failed to complete. And again, this meeting is going to be very eye-opening for a lot of people. I got fired for not reaching my map goals which are basically extra work. And you want to go back to, I think, episode two or three, I talk about that. Those map goals, the two I missed, were helping the youth and the young adults worship teams get better and understanding technology and learning to get better as teams. I approached both those teams. Both of those teams said, no, thanks. We don't like your help. We don't want it. We're good, but thanks for asking. And I said, cool, my door's open. If you need my help, go for it. According to this pastor you're hearing right now, that's me throwing the youth pastor under the bus. That's exactly his words, and I have it on recording. So, again, let's be clear. I did not miss anything. I never missed a deadline. I never, ever did anything to be fired. I was, the, I was fired because I took parental leave. That's why I was fired. And they needed to come up with other things to say why I was fired. They also said they fired me because I was unhappy. They think I was unhappy. So they fired me because they thought I was unhappy. So let's not forget those points. He's not being fully truthful here. We failed in that regard. We are, we are also fully aware that letting a staff member go is a very painful experience for that person, their family, and many who are a part of their relational circle. We are certainly saddened by the pain many have experienced as a result of Josh's release from staff. For Josh and Kathy, and their children. The loss of this position has brought deep hurt. Our love for the martyrs and our prayers have and will continue to go up to them. No, thank you. Your prayers are bullshit. This is a bullshit statement. This, and a lot of people will be like, well, he's just trying to be, you know, he's being a pastor and he's, you know, and you should hear this. F this. Listen to this. Okay? There's no apology. I've never been told that we're sorry for what we did to you. I've never been told that sorry we burned you out and then threw you away like a piece of like a gum wrapper. I've never heard anything like he's just admitting here. Maybe we didn't do it all right, but there's still not an apology. Let's not forget this is a church people. This isn't a corporation. I understand a corporation might do something and tries to get away from the apology because that basically is admitting guilt. And that's basically what they're doing here. But let's not forget these are Christians C professing Christians pastors who are refusing to apologize to humble themselves at all even though they are wrong and the fact that they're giving this statement right now speaks volumes because everything that i've come out with there's no rebuttal and because maybe they don't want to but let's let's keep digging but that what he just said there is utter bullshit and i do not accept that josh was brought on staff in january of 2016 we were excited by his passion, creativity, vocal skills, contagious personality, technical skills, and energy. Josh was a lot of fun to have on staff. He stretched us in many healthy ways. However, less than a year and a half after being hired, serious concerns were brought before the elders regarding Josh's ability to lead well in this role. You hear that? This is why I feel like I'm a little more justified in my anger and betrayal, right? A year and a half in is the moment where I started asking them, guys, I'm being burned out. You are literally burning me out like I'm fizzling. Please help me. 
And don't forget up to this point, there was never a moment where I reached out. And this is also the year and a half that the new church was built. And I asked the question about why is the new church over $150,000 over budget on a $300,000 budget? Let's not forget that's the moment I asked that question. That's the moment. He just admitted it right there. There's serious issues with Josh. He's asking hard questions. He It looks like he's being, uh, looks like he's trying to cause disturbances or be toxic. When I didn't complain to anybody ever on staff, never. I never was, I was never toxic. You know, those people in the offices that are like, they just, all they do is complain and you just sometimes, and sometimes you want to hear it. And sometimes you're like, I just can't, all they do is complain. That's, I was never that person. Never, ever, ever, ever. Any issue I ever had, even from the top down, I would never bring it down to anybody else. I would internalize it. I would submit to my pastor and I would move on with what I was supposed to do. I would never bring that down below me. It would always go up. And that's how you're supposed to do this. And so what happened was I started asking questions and they said this. Another point to make here is that if there were major issues at a year and a half in, why was I not spoken to? Because when you're doing something wrong and there's major issues where they're going to fire you or whatever else, they, their protocols in their, in their handbook that I read specifically said, if there are issues with you, we are going to approach you and we're going to give you an opportunity to fix those issues. I was never given that opportunity ever. The only time I ever heard about any of the stuff that I was about to be let go was the day they fired me after I took my leave. So if he's telling the truth here, why didn't they do it the biblical way where they approached me and said, look, we have these concerns about your leadership. We have these concerns about what you're doing and this and this. I never heard an inkling anything of it until after I told them my problems, until after I sat down with the lead pastor here and said, here's my struggles. And this is the stuff that I'm really struggling with. I never heard anything until I actually said those things. So here is a problem. And this is a problem in a lot of churches, I bet. But the guy that got fired that was a tech director of my church, he literally only worked there for six months and he was not doing his, the job properly. He was given this privilege of three months. We're, gonna, we're giving you a warning for three months. Please smarten up. Didn't. Gave him another month. Didn't. Then got fired. I was a lead pastor on staff of a church. I was helped growing massive numbers. People were starting to come to the church because of the music and the production I was putting on. It cannot be denied, and you can ask anybody that goes there. And a lot of them hated me for it because they hated the production of it, they, and for maybe good reason, but they hated that I brought that. A lot of the older legacy people who don't like that style of music and like hymns and like the old way of doing church, they hated me. But a lot of the new people who were coming came because of that. And so like it or not, yeah, maybe the performance was not such a good thing. Maybe it was, they, they felt it was, it was like diluting the church and not bringing real believers in. I don't know what the issue was. I, I, don't, I, can't, I can't address it because no one talked to me about it. I just got fake notes written under my door, unsigned notes with hate. And then that person that's commented on my part four video, right? Um, so it needs to be said, right? I didn't know any of this. And if, why would you not tell me if you just told me you loved everything about me and loved me and loved my family and everything else and all that stuff, why would you not give me the courtesy and the, and the, and the grace and the mercy that Jesus has shown you and teaches us in the Bible? Why would you not offer me any of that? Any of it? You just sprung it on me after I took leave and fired me. I didn't receive any warnings, no messages, nothing. And those two job performances before this one, they were by far and away, I'm amazing. We love having you here. We're so excited about you. All the, and I hope he still has those on record because you can see them on the record. I think I have them in my email too, where he's like, you're amazing, you're amazing, you're amazing. Everything changed once I started asking hard questions. Let's not forget it. He's not saying any of that because why would he? Lengthy discussions along with prayer ensued for a number of the elders' meetings. Strategies were put in play to help address the concerns. But none of the strategies were, were, were ever told to me. Basically, they were talking behind my back, planning my firing is what he's saying here and not telling me anything about it and not allowing me to be better, not allowing me to correct myself, not giving me any grace, not saying here. Are you. What did I do that was so wrong that there was no turning back? What did I do? And they to this day will not tell me if it's a map goal a year and a half in. I had not missed any map goals. So that's a lie. I did not miss any map goals that year. I apparently missed map goals the day they fired me. So if they were talking about firing me a year and a half before they fired me, and then they fired me for map goals, there's a disconnect here, okay? So if they were planning to my demise way back in the day, talking to my back, making all these plans without approaching me biblically and saying, here's the problem we're having. Do you guys see a problem with that? Do you guys see a problem with that? That's basically gossip. That's, bas that's very, very, very dirty to do that to somebody, especially in a church. This is a church. Let's not forget that. They represent Christ. Every role comes with expectations, 
And sometimes an organization or an individual brings the right strength to the role that help them perform at an optimum level. In some cases, the organization thinks the person can change to meet the expectations. And at other times, the person hired attempts to adapt to meet the expectation. In this case, Josh did not have the required strength that the rule demanded. This is very important, what he's saying here. I was warned very early on by a friend that was really close to me that said, I want you to be careful with this lead pastor and this leadership because what they try to do is slot you into something. You come in with all of your strengths and your abilities. They hire you based on those strengths and abilities. But what they do is they find, they try to, and this is everybody who stays on staff there. And I love most of the people on staff there, but unfortunately they're yes men and yes women. They fit into this slot and they want you to fit in the slot and fit in. But because I'm always about what's next, what's next, let's do bigger, better, you know, I was always about dreaming and all that stuff. I didn't fit into their slot because I was always pushing forward. I was always asking hard questions. I was always saying, what's next in ministry? What can we do to push the boundaries? How can we do this better? Blah, blah, blah. I never fit into their slot. And the people that were fired before me, all the conversations I had with those people that were fired before me and let go and all that stuff before me all said the same thing. We didn't fit into his neat little slot that he wanted us to fit into. And he tried to fit us into that slot, but we're just, this, this is who we are. And so the people that have survived at this church are the people who fit into the slots and are like, boom, you fit into the slot, you can stay. If you don't fit into the slot, peace out. And so why hire people based on, their, on, on who I am and then try to change me later? Like I just, that gets me and I was warned early and it brought me back to the attention. And so all the people that I spoke to bef that, that got fired before me all said the same thing. They all got tried to get switched into this tiny little, you need to be this way. And if you change that or, or we see that you're not fitting into that slot that we thought you would fit into. So it's time to go. Let's not forget that. This is a, this is a systemic problem in churches too, by the way, everybody, every church has their culture, their language and all this stuff. And if you don't fall into that, like it's almost being part of the cool club. I'm not joking. It's like sitting, it's like mean girls. If you don't, if you're not part of that, eventually you'll get phased out. And people who come in who are, who are themselves, who think I'm being hired because they, they see something in me. They eventually be like, well, you didn't change enough. So we're, you're, you're leaving. That is the most unchristian thing of all of this, regardless of the lies and all that. This is crazy. Be like we want you to be or peace out. We hoped it would work out, but it was not in his best interest or ours to keep him in this position. Thank you for telling me what's in my best interest. Thank you. It might not have been in your best interest, but don't ever say that was not my best interest because in the recording that's going to come out, I say that. This is, this is not, I am not in agreement with you. I do not think this is in my best interest. I think I belong here. I said that, I said that verbally. And when this recording gets out, and it will, you're going to hear that with your own ears. Ultimately, you want the right person with the right God-given strength so that all align in a healthy, productive role. Let's talk about production, shall we? Let's talk about it. I asked them also in this recording that I have, which will come out soon. Um, what did I miss? What deadlines did I miss? That's how many deadlines I missed. I missed a meeting with the lead pastor when I was on leave. Yes, I might have missed something here and there, an email or whatever. I never missed any major deadlines. If anything, I added to my workload by doing extra things all the time. So he's lying here. I literally worked way more than anybody else, like way more. I had way more responsibilities than anybody else. I did way more and I cross platforms a lot. Video, production, tech, uh, photos, graphics. They had a full-time guy. I still helped him. I crossed many, many places to do a lot of things. And what he's saying here is an, is it utter bullshit. The elders met with an employment lawyer to seek the appropriateness of releasing Josh during his parental leave, given that such timing would provide Josh with the greatest financial advantage to him and his family. In February of 2019. So they're trying to see, like, we were trying to help him here. We were trying to be like, how can we get him the most money here so that he, you know, is happy? <laughs> Guys, not everybody just wants to have money. It's just not, 
this is this is their problem. We needed to give them the greatest financial advantage. No, you met with an employment lawyer to say, if we fire this guy on parental leave, are we going to be sued? Because he took parental leave and we're firing. And the lawyer was like, yeah, sounds good. Go ahead and do that. And then now look where we are. They hired a lawyer to protect. To cover their asses. Don't get this twisted, everybody. Josh was informed of his relief from staff. Josh hired a lawyer to challenge the legality of our decision. That challenge was unsuccessful. No, oh, and this is the jackpot phrase that we're going to cover here. This is what's got me upset. I'm going to breathe a little bit. Because what this statement he just said right here was Josh hired a lawyer to basically sue us or to, to challenge us that we were not legal in what we did, right? He hired a lawyer to do this and he was unsuccessful in doing so. But because I'm locked into the thing I signed about our, uh, to, to our agreement, I'm not even allowed to tell you the other stuff. And I think this is bait, to be honest with you. They're actually act baiting me into telling you about our agreement. But I can tell you this. I did not sue them. I can also tell you this, that it was, I was gung-ho to take these people to a human rights tribunal. And this is why it didn't happen. And, and I'm gonna, and this is gonna speak to this in generalizations, because I'm not gonna talk about my severance or anything like that, I'm not allowed to talk about it. But what churches do in corporations like this, what they do is they have unlimited funds to lawyers, okay? They can literally pay a lawyer unlimited because it's not coming out of his pocket. It's not coming out of the executive pastor's pocket. It's not coming out of anybody's pocket at the church. It's coming out of the congregation's pocket. So basically, if you still go to this church, you paid for that lawyer to scare the shit out of me. And so this is what, this is their, what they're trying to do. And so every time my lawyer needs to talk to their lawyer, it costs me hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Remember that one phone call where the lawyer is like, oh, you're talking about stuff. Cost me $600. I have an email where she, I can see her thread talking to that lawyer like they're best friends. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. They were making friendships on my dime, okay? I'm running out of money. I don't have a job anymore, remember? I got fired. My EI has run out, remember that? So what they, they are banking on this. They're saying he can't last much longer. So as we're going back and forth, going back and forth, I finally told my lawyer, this is it. This thing we're gonna send right now is it. If they refuse on this thing, we're going to a human rights tribunal. But there was never anything filed. And what he's saying here is I was unsuccessful is because when you sign these agreements, and everybody knows this, when you sign these agreements, you're basically signing saying that we are not guilty. We're gonna do this stuff for you, but we are not guilty. And you're signing on this dotted line saying we're not guilty. That's what you have to do in order to sign this. And so I was bullied and pressured by even my own lawyer. And here's why, she said, look, if you fight this, all the settlement you might get from this is going to go in my pocket plus maybe ten to twenty thousand dollars. And could, what am I going to say, guys? I have no job. I have four kids to feed. This is exactly what they were banking on. This is exactly what they were hoping for. I couldn't fight it, and so many people can't. They cannot come up against these people because we cannot afford it. That's the problem. I can't go thirty thousand dollars worth of debt. Like, yeah, this this I might have a, 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 a I might be angry at these people, but my family comes first. Feeding my family and being responsible with my with my my family's money is more important than getting payback. Okay, but I was ready to go to a to go to a human rights tribunal. I was ready. My lawyer convinced me not to pressure. And then pressure on my family because they were they were doing delay tactics all day long. Delay, delay, delay. They would delay for like weeks sometimes at a time. And it would cost me so much money. So in the end, I literally had no choice. And this is the tactic that corporations and churches use. And we're going to talk about that in another video. But the non-disclosure agreements that churches have in their back pockets. About churches using lawyers to bully people and to scare people, Christians, into and these pastors and everybody else to shutting their mouths. Okay? So basically, he's alluding here that I challenged them and I failed. And I am utterly upset about that phrase, that statement. He, that is absolutely a lie. I didn't challenge them at all in court. Our lawyers talked back and we came to an agreement because I ran out of money and I, was gonna, I just had no options left. And they had unlimited funds. And remember, when I sent them the recording, they sicked their lawyer on me at like midnight and like I was scared. 
So again, I'm a human, guys. I, can, I know that I'm coming up against stuff. I just, I'm, I'm human. I have to figure out how to mitigate the risk so I don't lose everything for my family. I can't go $30,000 into debt to fight a bunch of boomer pastors of a church. It's just not worth it at that point. But now I have this platform. And what he just said right there is utter bullshit. That was the worst thing he could have said right there. And so as I talk to my lawyer about releasing this recording, when you guys hear it with your own ears, this just serves to steal my resolve about how right I actually am about this whole situation, about how they're shirking responsibility so far and saying, well, he hired a lawyer, and uh, so, cl but clearly we were in the right because there's nothing that came from it. That's what he's saying here. I just, it bothers me so much because so many pastors in the past have been hurt by this, this tactic, by this, look, I can't afford to fight it, so I'm just going to walk away, take this Peasley, whatever they're going to give me, and walk away. Every person I've ever spoken to in the past about this situation all said, I wish I wouldn't have signed that NDA. I wish I would have taken it to the next level. And everybody says that. And I even say that, too, because I signed something I, f I didn't realize was signing. I didn't sign an NDA, but I signed that one thing that said, but we're going to talk to a lawyer about it. I'm trying to get out of it. And I think I will. And I'm very excited about showing you guys this. So I'm just, I'm sad because they, their tactic worked and then they can use this phrase probably written by that same lawyer to say this, to say this thing, to confuse people, to tell people like he tried, but he failed. So clearly we were right. That is utter, utter garbage. During this time, his lawyer informed us that we were restricted from contacting Josh directly. Okay. I mean, any lawyer will say that. <laughs> the first lawyer had said, don't talk to them anymore. Any lawyer, like I don't understand this statement. If you've ever spoken to a lawyer, they're going to say, don't talk to them anymore. Partly because I think the lawyer's like, they need to talk to me so I can get paid to talk to them. So partly is that's probably, <laughs> but a lawyer takes care of that for you. They get there, they receive the thing and then they send it back that you talk through lawyers. That's why it's so expensive. Um, and they wanted to talk, they wanted me to talk to me personally. And the executive pastor would try to FaceTime me and text me a bunch of times. And I said, please stop contacting me. I had to tell him by my lawyer's advice. So I don't know what they're trying to get at here. Yeah. That's standard procedure during this stuff. On April 28th, 2019, the congregation was informed through the weekly update of Josh's removal from his position. That published statement had been crafted by the elders along with Josh and his lawyer. Okay, so let's do that. Now, what he's saying here is, is important, right? So he's saying something here. I told them specifically, I do not want you telling people that I, this was mutual. Because in the recording that you guys are going to hear eventually, they say at least four times that phrase. We don't want to tell the people that this is this is uh, that we fired you. We want to tell people this is mutual, and they just they just they pushed it and pressured me. So I want to read you what we agreed on, okay? What I was cool with, and then I'll read what they said. You tell me if it's the same, okay? So this is what we agreed on, my wife and I. Josh Barber has been a blessing in so many ways in the life and worship ministry here at church. His energy, his humor, his skills, and leadership gifts have helped us move forward in a number of areas. We thank God for all Josh has done to serve and lead at church. There are times when the needs of a church and the skills of a staff member do not align in the way both parties dream they will. That fit challenge can often lead to separation, and that is what has happened here. Josh has completed his time on our pastoral team. Our prayers go to Kathy and Josh and the kids. They've been a blessing, blah, blah, blah. Remember this line. That fit challenge can often lead to a separation, and that is what has happened here. I was okay with that, even though it was pretty vague, but there's, the, I, I almost said, okay, that sounds like, yeah, that's okay. That, is, that led to the separation here, meaning that we separated from Josh, right? Not me quitting. And I was cool with that. And this is what they came out with. Staffing update. Josh Barber has been a blessing in so many ways in the life and worship ministry here at church. His energy, his humor, his skills, and leadership gifts have helped us move forward in a number of areas. We thank God for all Josh has done to serve and lead at church. There are times when he, the needs of a church and the skills of a staff member no longer align the way both parties envisioned. That was changed. Sometimes that requires each party to take stock and make changes accordingly. As a result, Josh has completed his time on our pastoral team. The difference in these two phrases here, and I know we're getting into semantics, but that fit challenge can often lead to separation. That is what has happened here, is what I agreed upon. Then they said this, sometimes that requires each party to take stock and make changes accordingly. They changed it. So the actual thing I agreed on physically and said, yep, that sounds good. They didn't put that out there. He just lied. Don't forget that. We're uncovering half truths and lies. This is not a half truth. This is a lie. He said that we all crafted this together and we came up with a statement. They did not release the statement that I agreed upon. That's a lie. We believe 
given all the circumstances, that we made the right decision and executed it in the right way. We believe what we did was best for Josh and his family. So that's part one of the video. So we believe what we, we, we did what was best for me. They keep, they keep putting it on me. We, did, we think this was good for him. This was good for you guys because I wasn't fitting into your slot. I was asking hard questions and this was good for you. Stop. This is, this is to me, the, one of the things that bugs me a lot the most is that he's like, this was for him. We did this for him. We, fight, we moved this guy and his family out here, uprooted their family and their roots from this place, moved him here, okay? And this was best for him. If you guys can't hear this, and, 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 and just kind of, even if you don't, not on my side, people who are listening from that church who are listening to this podcast right now, if you can't hear that and say, that's okay, that's a little bit of BS, then I'm sorry. You, you drink the Kool-Aid and I can't help you. But let's keep going to the next video. Any questions that you'd like to ask? So he finishes up and he's like, hey, does anybody have any questions? And so here are the questions that people have asked. And I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to cut forward because it's so awkward, all the silence. And all you, the people in the little video squares at the top, they're all like, it's like they're at a funeral. <laughs> they're like, there's, we have to be somber about this. But there's a moment here, I'm going to call it out in a second, when someone asks a question and the lead pastor smirks and it pisses me off. So let's get into this right now. The questions that people ask, and there's not, there's not a lot. And this is another problem in churches. They didn't open this up to the public, this meeting, because of this right here. Because imagine there was 200 people there and imagine the questions that would have been asked. They didn't want to open it up to just anybody because they didn't want people coming in and asking questions. And if you don't think I'm right, you're wrong. So they're, at, they're waiting for questions to be answered. Asked. Waiting for questions to be asked. So the person says here, thanks for addressing the issue. That's not a question. But at least, you know what? Good. They did address it and they were, a lot of people were like, finally, you addressed. Awkward silence. It's so awkward just watching their faces up in the corner. All right. So here's the question from a person at the church says, so are things closer to being resolved with Josh? Taking a long time to answer this question. I would say no. Uh, we have the first time I've heard some truth in this conversation. Thank you. They're not close to being resolved because we're sitting here and you're listening to this. So there's some truth. Finally, got something. Got a straight answer. We have asked Josh if he would meet with a few of the elders and he could certainly bring someone along to meet with a few of them. But uh, he has not agreed to do that. Yeah, why would I do that again? Oh, because you guys were planning my demise a year and a half into my job behind my back, didn't tell me anything. Yeah, it sounds really smart for me to go meet with those people. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Needless to say, there's an elder on that board who literally um, betrayed my wife, okay, who was her friend and lied to her by omission, took her out for lunch and just knew I was being fired and like took her out for lunch like everything was like, la la la, we're friends and they didn't tell her, didn't warn her, anything. Again, I'm going to go back to this. If you're a friend of somebody, you know devastating information about their life and you don't tell them, fuck you, <laughs> okay? You are wrong. I'm sorry. I know that you're an elder in the church and that's more important to you than friendship and being real and being honest, but that's what I'm saying. The reason I'm not going to meet with these elders is because of what I just said. There's people who lie. There's people who are, why am I going to sit down with people who are literally like, we're firing this guy, but we're not going to tell him why. What benefit is that of to me? I already approached this biblically. The elder I reached out to said with the recording, when I first had the recording, I said, I'm going to release this to the public. I wanted to let you guys know and approach you first. So you can really, you can release a statement to me and I can read it. Instead, the elder said, okay, well, you need to do this biblically. You need to reach out to the executive pastor and lead pastor with the recording and tell them your concerns. That's biblical. I said, hey, you know what? You're right. That is biblical. And I'd like to take the biblical route here. So what I did was I sent the, the same email to the executive pastor and lead pastor and said, here are the issues I have with you guys. The, you, you explicitly tell lies inside of this conversation. I'd like you to, to answer to why are you okay with lying to the congregation? You know, and it wasn't, and I just, I, I worded it very politely and very, you know, conservatively because that's how they speak and I just was really I was interested I was like I'm going the biblical route I want to let you guys know what I have and I want to tell you here's my complaints and you know their biblical answer to me call a lawyer and sick a lawyer on me at midnight to scare me that was their answer so I approached this biblically they approached it through a lawyer that speaks volumes why am I sitting down with these trash people 
I'm not going to sit down with these trash people because they all did it wrong. They all agreed to fire me illegally. Okay? That's it. They hired a lawyer to protect their asses. That's why I'm not going to meet with your stupid elders. And another thing. The executive pastor and the lead pastor are on the elders. <laughs> so I'm not going to sit down with these guys who literally lied to my face. What are they going to do now? What, what, I would love to know what would have happened there. I, I almost should have done it. I almost should have recorded that too. I almost should have went to that meeting and been like, what are you going to say? Right? I, I would have loved to ask each of them to their eyes. Are you okay with what's happening right here? And if you knew about this a year and a half ago, why did you not tell me? Why was I not afforded the same privileges as all the people before me? And that had been fired before. Why was I, I should, I wish I would have gone now. I, I do because I would have been like, why answer my hard questions? And they wouldn't have given me any answers because these are the type of answers they give. They're taught to do this. Another question other than the podcast, are there further issues such as legal ones for the church? No, we don't believe there are any legal issues for the church. So, yeah, but I'm talking to a lawyer right now about if we agreed on this statement and they changed the statement, I wonder if they're in breach. I, I doubt it. And their lawyer would probably be, no, nah, it's not in breach, blah, blah, blah. But there are legal issues still that are still ongoing here because I'm pretty sure when I release this recording, they're going to hit me with a slap lawsuit. So there will be legal issues. And we're going to cover that in a second. Um, I don't actually think that he's, yeah, we're going to cover that in a second. But as far as there is now, he's right. There is nothing between us legally, nothing happening at all. Um, when we uh, met with the point of lawyer and talked with her about the situation, she was in agreement with our, us moving forward on that. So we, we addressed this as best we could, recognizing that there may be legal implications and feel that we did it appropriately. You sure did, because look where we are right now. You sure did this appropriately. What you did was you tried to bully me into silence, and you sort of did by me signing that thing. And then you tried to tell me that, well, you tried you tried to take us down through a lawsuit, but you were unsuccessful. Um, but yeah, they're, let's not forget, guys. They're like, they've got a lawyer protecting them here. This is a church who fired a pastor and, and, and literally shunned his family and lost all our relationships. And all they're worried about is their legal stance here. So the first thing they do, if look, if the first thing you need to do when you go fire a pastor is go talk to a lawyer first... You did it wrong. You did it wrong. You literally are feeling guilty already. And you're thinking, how are we going to do this? Because we're going to get sued. So um, isn't that indicative right there that you broke the law or that you thought you were? That speaks volumes. How are legal expenses being managed? That's a very good question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, there aren't any ongoing legal expenses. Did you hear that? Trudeau? Does this guy work for Trudeau? <laughs> I don't think that's what she was asking. Where did these legal fees come from? Who paid for these legal fees? These very expensive legal fees. And then this is where I think, does he say this? So this is where lead pastor has to step in and be like, okay. It's almost like they had a meeting beforehand. Um, we uh, used money that we had available uh, to do that. There aren't any ongoing legal expenses uh, at this time. That's not what they're asking. So yes, he admitted there, we had money that we was available to us. That, that was the most vague thing. What you did was you used the money that was people have tied to the church to bully me, to silence me, to literally force me into uh, to, uh, an agreement. That's what you did with the money. That's the money that people are putting out of their hard-earned pockets. Right there, right? Putting it into your pockets. The question is, I have not watched the podcast, but is there a plan to address them in some way? Uh, address them online, actually, it says. Yeah. Uh, thank you. That's a, that's a great question. Uh, no, the way that we are addressing this issue is uh, dealing with it like we are right now. With a closed off meeting that is supposed to be open to the entire population of that church. So don't forget that. Remember, this is generally a meeting that everybody's allowed to come to, but they use the excuse of, oh, but we're voting in this one, so we can't have everybody in there. But then they came in and they had a separate place to vote anyway. So they could have opened it up to everybody just like the rest of their meetings. Uh, our feeling is that if we got into an open dialogue back and forth, that it would be very difficult for people to sort through everything. And we just don't feel Why would it be difficult? Why was the truth difficult? Okay, so yeah, maybe he's right. Maybe the truth is difficult. But so let, let give them the honest truth. 
Let them know, people. They deserve it. That's why churches are called to be transparent. If you can't be transparent, I'm, I've told this on this podcast in many places, go for it. You have my permission to say anything you want. It's don't, don't, don't stop talking about it on my account. Tell the people what they want to know because they deserve it. They, your congregation is asking their leadership what happened and you're not going to answer their questions. That's kind of your job. I feel that's appropriate. It's not appropriate, though. It's not appropriate. Uh, the way we address it, we address it, it's just what we're doing now. Yeah, private meetings. Way to address it. To, like, 40 people. <laughs> uh, another question. Do we have procedures in place to avoid similar issues in the future? Good question. Um, as, as I read... Uh, we really feel that we handled this in the right way. Uh, nobody does things perfectly. Uh, I, I think that it's very difficult to always predict how someone will respond. Uh, but we they did this in the right way. Again, we're going to go back to this every time. Having secret meetings behind my back with elders, talking about how they're going to fire me, then meeting with lawyers to see how they can fire me legally and being scared of all that. they that's He's literally telling you right now that he thought that was cool, right? That's, yeah, we did this right. We did this right. There is another question. Is that anyone, if anyone doesn't, does feel they are struggling and need to process this more, what should they do? I think you should call. Uh, it just happens to be that this is questions from a pastor on the team. So it's kind of a planted question. Uh, hey, they probably had a meeting. Hey, if, uh, when it gets, when we, throw this question out there. Make sure you throw this question out. I think you should contact the elders and uh, we would be more than willing to help you walk through this. Uh, I have not listened to any of the podcasts or watched any of the videos that have come out. I know that a lot of people have, um, but um, I just haven't felt it was, a, it was a wise thing for me to do. Um, this is truth. Lead pastor, don't watch these videos. They will make you upset because you're being called out on your BS, which nobody does because you're the lead pastor of this giant church who's revered, who has a, a, a table of pastors that sits under them from all the other churches in the region. Nobody ever calls you on your BS. Finally, someone calls you on your BS. So don't watch it. I don't think that your narcissistic personality can handle this. Um, but I know that for many of you, there are some issues that were raised. We tried to address them directly in the statement, the issues that we felt were key. Um, but if you need... So they said, look, here's the key issues that we're hearing from people. You know, Josh said that uh, you have fired him illegally. Right. And I do still stand on that statement completely. They did fire me illegally. And until I have proof, otherwise they fired me illegally. What they're trying to say here is that he challenged us legally through a lawyer and was unsuccessful, meaning that that is that's their way of saying like he was wrong. We did this all legally. No, there was never any court procedures. Nothing like that. Nothing. Even my lawyer said, yeah, you're probably going to win this thing, but it's going to cost you an arm and a leg, an eyeball and a butt cheek. So you probably won't be able to. So it's, but you're going to get more if you do it this way and they'll whatever, right? You're, you'll be able to tell your story and everything else. So it all kind of evened out. So yeah. Yeah. If you need to talk with someone, please, please contact the elders. We'll be more than willing to chat with you. The elders have failed multiple times on multiple ways with people before me too. These elders are not doing their job properly. Remember those other elders I spoke that left the church? That said, we don't go here anymore because the elders have been in a season of uncorrecting. They are not correcting where they need to correct. And these people who are amazingly brilliant, smart, wise, and everything else who I, everybody looked up to, they left. That speaks volumes. That this elders board is literally just a power pack of people who want to be in, in leadership for whatever reason. And they're all wealthy. And they, they are not connected to the people whatsoever. Given that we are restricted on what we can say. Uh, but we would certainly want to walk with you through that process. There, yeah, basically you just said, come talk to us. We're not going to tell you anything, but we'll walk with you. We're not going to give you any answers because they don't give anybody any real answers. They're all the fact that they have to speak so legal and legalese and corporate ease speaks volumes more than anything else. People let's not forget. This is this. Every church is like this, like this. Every church that operates like this has to do this. So this is the way it is. Percent in favor and three percent opposed. So the motion is carried. I don't know what that ballot was for, but that's the, that's the thing that they did on the side. So anybody could have attended this meeting and they were doing ballots. This is indicative, too, of this church. 97% in favor of everything. Nobody asks, nobody knows what's going on in this place. So I didn't, I didn't get the whole meeting here. I just got this statement from, from my anonymous source, okay? And so 
it needs to be said. Again, I want to reiterate a few things. I was fired, and I'll bring out the statement why I was fired, for missing my map goals. Okay? But they go on in this meeting to talk about their new map goals. And my person, ha and I have the map goals from last year, the MAPs, and the map goals from the new ones that they just put out. And if you put them in a PDF, uh, like, side-by-sider that shows you the differences, they didn't change anything except for the date. Hear me out for this. This is why I'm, this is why this is important. If I was fired from missing a map goal, okay, these, these people before COVID hit had six months to complete some of their map goals. Some of them, not saying they could have completed them all, but six months is a half of a year. At least half of them should have been fixed, done, right? Not one person on that staff completed their map goal because they just repeated those map goals for the next year. Not one person did it. Are you, put, are you Do I need to, I don't need to spell it out for you? You got it, right? You understand? I was fired for missing map goals, but these people didn't do any of them. This church has been collecting tons of money from the government to keep continue operating. They're, they're losing a ton of money and they're increasing their budget. <laughs> like, and people are like, 97%, sounds good to me. That's a good way of using your money that you're losing. This church is literally losing like 200 some thousand dollars a year. They gave all the staff, this is the thing that pisses me off the most. And ugh, They gave all the staff a 6% raise after I left. <laughs> Just as a kick Josh in the nuts. Kick him when he's down. Like they're just spending money. Like just wasting it. Like water. So I have all this money coming in from the government. And they have rich people just willing to, to just bail them out whenever they want. And they're increasing budgets. For what reason? For optics. That's it. Like what else are they going to do? They're just spending money. I've got a question. And maybe some of you guys might know this answer. I don't know. Because I've been asking this question to a lot of people. And nobody has the answer. Look. If a Catholic church goes under. The Catholic church owns that church. Okay, even uh, like a Protestant church goes under, the umbrella probably owns that church, that plant. When a non-denominational church goes under, okay, God forbid, if they go under for whatever reason, something happens and the whole place has to shut down because of, I don't know, moral failing or, you know, a recording comes out and everybody wants to leave. Just let's say that a church falls apart and they cannot keep their doors open anymore. Who who owns that building? Who owns the land? Who owns the property inside, the tech, the, the millions of dollars of tech, the computers? Who owns, like, the, the, especially in this piece of property, talking tens of millions and millions of dollars of property? Who owns this property? I want to know because it really, really matters. Because if it's, if it's a bunch of elders who sit on a board of directors who own this property as a, as a corporation, Something I don't know and I'm exploring this in a future video I want to know who owns this property if church goes under that's non-denominational is not connected to a hierarchy of a church Where does that money go? I would love to know if you guys know anything about that or have seen that or heard anything like that Let me know But I, I think I was told by my nano source too that uh, Basically if you're a member of a church and that church does go under for whatever reason and there's debt It's on the members to pay that debt. So if you're a member of a church and you didn't know that go check your membership Okay, just just go check because COVID is going to shut down a lot of churches. So make sure if you're a member of a church and you've signed something that you unsign that shit real fast so that you don't have to pay the debts of the church who's who's used their money in bad ways. That's a side. That's a side thing. Anyway, so that is what happened at this recording. And that was the statement they released by a lawyer. And they sat down and they had all these meetings beforehand and said, make sure that you say this phrase that there is no ongoing legal fees. Right. I'm sure there will be once I re release the recording, but it needs to be said. And I'm going to reiterate this again. They take money that people go, that go to this church, put their hard earned tithe money into this place, thinking it's going to go to the, the Lord's work. Okay. This is for the Lord because they're going to serve missions. They're going to serve the community. We're going to pay our pastors. We're going to do all this stuff. Do you think that person's going to sign that and saying, I really want this money to go to suing Josh. There are some people that would probably give them money and probably help them with that and probably have, but I'm just saying. It needs to be kept being said that pastors are being bullied into silence because they literally can't afford it. And churches can use all their exorbitant wealth to pay lawyers. And if you look at the bottom line numbers, I'm going to find those soon. I'm going to get someone to send me the numbers from last year and this year from the church, this church at this meeting. And you can see the line. And I'm going to actually dig into it with, a, with a, uh, an accountant to find out the legal ways churches are hiding what they spend their money on. Like it's legal to do what they're, to put their lines where they need to go and miscellaneous titles and stuff like that. But if they don't have a line on there that says, you know, lawyer to silence Josh, I want to know why. They're not telling you how much they're paying for certain things and all that stuff. Why are they keeping that from you? Why are churches not transparent? So I'm going to dig into their, their money. I'm not going to put any names, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to, I'm actually hiring an accountant to come on and talk to me about how churches 
do this and how shady it is because they're not being transparent. And let's see what CRA has to say about it as well. A church is a nonprofit organization that needs to be very, very transparent in the way that they spend their money. And so many people get away with these legal loopholes and we're gonna find out each legal loophole to see what's going on. Because let's see how the sausage is made, everybody. And that what you just saw was sort of how the sausage was made. They kept it a little bit above surface, but they still kept it private to their members who are like diehard Kool-Aid drinkers. So that's it, guys. That's the craziness that's going on right now. The lawyer so far has told me that it sounds like he can help me, is what he said, which means sounds like I can take some money off you and uh, <laughs> uh, give you some advice. But he, based on what he's read and the agreements and stuff like that and what I've told him about the story and the clause that I've been, I feel like I'm locked into, he says, it sounds like we can help you. That is really good news. I'm, I am... 80% sure that when this recording gets out and the majority of the population of this church hears with their own ears what they said to me, they in, in, they cannot in good conscience at least call them out, maybe not not go and hate them or whatever, but at least not approach them with like, can you answer these um, questions honestly? Why were you willing to lie to us? Why do, why do you not want it to come across like you're firing this guy? You're firing him. Why are you scared to tell people that? There's going to be some really hard questions again. Why are, you, why are you okay with lying to the government for employment income? That is literally a federal offense, by the way. It's fraud. So when you hear this with your own ears and you don't approach them and you just let it go on, that's okay. You can put the marshmallows in your ears and be quiet about it. That's fine. But I'm, I'm confident when everybody hears this recording uh, that big changes are going to happen. I think early, early retirements might happen. People might be resigned. And if nothing happens after that, then I, I, I'm, at, I'm at a loss. There's nothing else I could do. But I will still continue to uncover the church and its, and its woes um, at every level. Because that's my mission now. Deconstruct the church as it is to build up what needs to come out after. It's, guys, it's the Great Awakening. And I hope I could be a catalyst for that for you. If you have any questions, concerns... You know, if did I not answer something properly? Was I wrong about something? Maybe I'm maybe I'm overlooked something. Maybe I was too harsh about something, and that's probably right because I'm a little bit, a little bit heated. Um, call me out on it. I'm happy to answer all your questions. And if you're out there from that church and you want to leave comments, please do. I like pinning them and answering all your questions. It's really important to me. If I stay silent on this, I am complicit when they do it to the next person. And I know for a fact that this youth pastor and I told this youth the new youth pastor that came in and his wife, who's the new worship pastor, I told them in an email. I said, look out for this. I said, look, I don't want to deter you from taking this position, but I wanted to let you know that as soon as you get in there, here are some red flags you need to watch for. When someone quits and they put that job on you, watch out for it. What happens when this new youth pastor gets in? The other youth pastor splits out and guess who's now who's got that full-time job. So funny, I took parental leave as a worship pastor, okay? That worship pastor comes in and she took parental leave. I just, you can't write it. She gets pregnant and takes parental leave. You can't write this stuff. It's just crazy. Okay, so I'm hoping that I'm affecting change. I basically am whistleblowing right now. This is basically what I'm doing and I'm willing to take a personal hit um, if they hit me with a slap lawsuit. Again, that's why I'm speaking to a lawyer to make sure that I'm protected. So if they do hit me with a facetious lawsuit, which is a lot of people do, they'll just spend the money because they're not spending it. They throw you a cease and desist, you get scared, you shut up. But if you fight it, and they, I think they know this and their lawyer knows this, if you fight it, you're probably gonna win. But to fight it, it's gonna cost you this. So if you guys are willing to stand by me on this and Go fund me if I get sued for this. I'm willing to keep whistleblowing. It is dangerous what I'm doing, okay? There are people who hate me. In my neighborhood, there are elders that live in my neighborhood, okay? That drive by me like this. <laughs> drive by, drive by stairs, right? And so there are people who are already calling me out nonstop. People really close to me who aren't taking a stance for me, who know my story. Okay, and that's fine. I knew this was going to happen. This is just the reality of this whole thing. This is a contentious issue. And when this recording gets out, this is it's all this, all of this lies in this recording when you hear it with your ears. All of it lies there. You can erase everything I've said in the past and just listen to this with your own ears without anybody saying anything to you and watch the outrage. I want you to write down how many times you say WTF. Okay, that's what this recording has the power to do. And I'm not, I'm not overselling it. I promise you. If anything, I'm underselling it. So that's today's video. Holy smokes. I didn't think it was going to go that far. I hope I was not super angry. I mean, I was, I got a little red in the neck. I think about some things that he was saying, some smirks that you can't see his smirks because I blurted it out, but he was smirking for some of those questions that really pissed me off a little bit. Not going to lie. Pissed me off. And the executive pastor was in a blank screen, probably not even in the meeting, just was there not saying a word, not saying a word because of the things I've spoken about him on here. 
And I just don't think that, I think he knows he's just not liked by anybody. And so he just doesn't want to make it worse, probably. So when the lead pastor speaks at this place, people listen. He has got influential power in this church. I'm not joking. We did one point, we were like, we need money. And he spoke about money finally when he didn't want to. And the money rolled in. I'm just saying, he's very influential in my city specifically, connected to a lot of people, police, politicians, other pastors of every church. I've literally been blacklisted from every church from leading worship just so you know. And that's because of him. And I know specifically, I've spoken to pastors that have spoken to him and he has told them those words. Come at me. I'm sorry. If you guys are willing to help stand with me and fight this thing, because I will, I honestly believe, guys, I, I'm not saying this to be like, I need money. I could not afford a lawsuit, to be honest with you. So if you're willing to stand with me in this, I'm willing to step out and risk it all to be a whistleblower so that I can affect change in this area specifically and for the pastors that come after me. And for all those pastors that came before me, I know you don't want to speak up because a lot of you sign stuff. This is going to sound harsh to you too. Because you didn't speak up and call these people on their toxic leadership behavior, it happened to me. It's not your fault. I'm not blaming you. But I'm saying this is in the world of like Bill Hybels and all these people who were allowed to be unchecked for 30 years and do the dirt they did. Jerry Falwell Jr., seven years. People know the stuff's going on, but they're afraid to talk about it. If you don't speak up, the next person gets hurt. It's kind of on you a little bit. Not all, a little bit on you. And so I feel personally responsible for the next people. That's why I'm doing this. My wife is not happy. <laughs> she loves me and she's willing to support me, but she's, I asked her to, rec to listen to this recording when I was driving because I couldn't download it and she's bawling her eyes out. This hurts her so much. She lost all of her friends. Our kids lost all of their friends. We were literally, we weren't excommunicated and like we signed and excommunicate you. We were socially excommunicated from this church and from the people. And those people still out there are, a lot of them are reaching out to me like, hey, we're friends, right? I need this from you. They're not really just being friends. They just want things from me. And so to those people, I say this. So enjoy your uh, day. Sorry about this negative video and uh, the heat that came out of my face. That was therapeutic though. And I feel more justified now than ever that these lies that they're telling people that I can speak to them. I'm glad they're speaking up too. And um, when I speak to a lawyer, you guys are gonna know as soon as I know about what rights I have, if I can really, I have a transcript ready to go. So if it's a transcript I'm allowed to release, that's cool. If there's some actors I can hire to act this out in exactly tone inflections, I might do that too. There's a lot of avenues I can take legally. I just wanna make sure that I'm protected because my family comes first. This whole thing, my family still comes first. So I'm not going to personally put myself on the line. Um, my family comes first. And I, I think you guys know and understand that too. But if you're willing to help me fight this, I'm willing to be the catalyst. <laughs> it is a little scary. At the same time, I'm never one to back down from a fight. And what are we teaching our kids when we back down from fights? What are we teaching our kids when we're silent and let people walk all over us? We're teaching them that that's okay. And that's not okay, everybody. That is not okay. Hey, guys, quick update. I just... Kind of cut a whole bunch of the stuff out of my videos. Um, my Patreons and my members got to see the original cut of this video, and I just asked them for some advice. I asked some of my close friends for advice, and I, I cut some stuff out. And so I just, you know, that's kind of what I do when I go through these huge processes. Because this is so personal, it can be really hard to talk about this objectively. And I know that I'm not as objective as I am in this with other things, but I just, I, I, I had to cut some stuff out, and I wanted to make sure that you're just getting the, the true facts and everything that's going on. A couple things to note is that I did start a GoFundMe, which you can find in the link below. Uh, a lot of people don't want to do that, and I totally understand. Here's another way you can support me uh, if you want to help me monetarily, which is helping my channel grow, is by buying a t-shirt, which you can find below. You can see the links in my description. That really helps. Or when you watch my videos, just watch the ads. One way, if you like a YouTuber and you want to support them, one way to do that is to watch the stupid commercials, unfortunately. That actually helps us a lot uh, when you watch our commercials. And if we have like a Nord VPN ad or something like that, to go actually buy that thing, that actually supports your favorite YouTubers too. I might even just create a video that if you don't wanna donate to the GoFundMe, no problem. Maybe I'll create a funny video that has a hundred ads in it and all you have to do is just play that video, <laughs> right? I don't know, I'm trying to think of creative ways for you to help me get this done. I'm actually, I've spoken to the lawyer already. Um, I, I have to, it's about $1,500 to $2,000 Canadian, which is about $8 US uh, retainer to get this guy to talk to me and get all the advice I need to get this going. Again, based on what he's seen in the agreement, he says, it sounds like you're okay here. So I'm really hoping that's the case, okay? Um, 
But again, it's no, it doesn't mean that they just won't hit me with a, a slap lawsuit. A slap lawsuit is basically just a lawsuit they know they're going to lose, but they're trying to scare you into silence. And a lot of churches, a lot of corporations do that. It's just standard practice. It's just the way it is. Uh, if, you do, if you ever listen to Ronan Farrow, Catch and Kill, he talks a lot about that kind of thing. The Catch and Kill is like they catch the story, they make you sign an NDA, and they throw the story away. It's sort of very similar to that. This is a standard practice to shut people up who don't have money. And we all know pastors, even though we're super flush with money, I'm just kidding. We're not. We're poor. And that's why they can do this to us. Those are some ways you, you can support. You can join the Patreon. Uh, go to patreon.com slash the dad challenge. Join there. Or you could join a YouTube membership. And uh, I have chats on Saturday nights. And if you feel you want to donate money through there, you can also do that. Again, like... I hate the fact that I have to ask for this and I kind of like roll my eyes because I know people are going to be like, oh, just asking for money. And I, I, I get that. Those people are going to say that. They're right. Right. I, I, I never thought I'd be here asking. I think those who want to support me in this are willing to help me with this. And I'm, you know, if you guys ever had an issue and I could help you in some way, you know, I would do it because I'm here for justice. I'm here for this. And I would do whatever I could in my platform to help you. And I think you know that. So I do feel like it's, I hate that I have to do this, but I'm, I'm okay with it because I think you guys are just, you guys are in this with me. You guys want to see this come to a resolution as much as I do. And I know that's just, it, this is a hard topic and it's hard for me to even do the GoFundMe and all that stuff. I don't, I've never done a GoFundMe for myself. I've done GoFundMes for lots of other people, um, but not for myself. And I kind of like, I get it. It's like, eh, right? Anyway, whew, that's the video. This is a crazy video. Like this is, this is, this one here is like, this is a hard hitting craziness video. So thank you for watching and supporting me through this. Um, and calling me out when you do call me out. That's cool too. Um, and I appreciate you guys just being here for this and just following along with this story. Cause it's just, it's definitely this overarching narrative in the world right now with churches. This is happening and it's stuff is the scales are falling off people's eyes and things are happening. And you're along with me for this ride. And I really appreciate it. So like, and subscribe, hit the little bell. Or don't. You know I don't care. I'm not going to beg you guys to watch me. If you like my content, I'm glad you're here. You don't have to do any of that stuff. I just appreciate that you're watching me right now. Like, I don't know if you noticed I shaved since the other day. I shaved. So basically, fake jawline because I'm fat. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate you. You are my therapy, and uh, I'm glad we're friends. I can't believe I get to do this. This is so cool.